If you could do anything you wanted to do without anything holding you back, what would it be? Everyone has a purpose in life and others want to hear the purposeful value that is in you. Now, here is the host of the Value in You show, your guiding coach and mentor, Ellis Kirkpatrick. Hi, and welcome to today's show. This is a pre-record because of events that have come up. It's always busy at the holidays and we've moved to a new home. So <laughs> that's why there is no background behind me, but an empty wall. That'll get fixed soon. You might notice that the title for today's show was Picnicking on the Beach. And as I told our guest, Eli Delaney, <laughs> what that was all about, I'll tell you. Um, I'd spoken with a friend of mine in Australia who says every Christmas they go picnicking on the beach. And I thought that sounded just wonderful. So for those of you who are thinking of something new you can do, go for a picnic on the beach. If you can, <laughs> might be winter time, but dress up warm. So today we're going to speak with Eli Delaney. I'm so glad that you're here, Eli. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, well, thank you so much, Ellis. It's my pleasure to be here. I love having these kind of fun conversations. Um, so I am your automated system strategist. I do, the fun thing about it is I love the automation. I love tools and technology, um, but I have another title. It's actually called the People Whisperer. Mm -hmm. And I like to use that one because it's just kind of fun. It was given to me by somebody else, a friend of mine. And it really is because I just love meeting cool people, which is like, which you'll see right above my head. If you're watching the video, I said, meet cool people, having a great time, just getting to have good conversations with people anytime I get. And my goal with the automation stuff is automate what you can. So you can do, um, so you can actually have time to do the things you can't, which are real relationships. That's right. That's right. Those are too hard to automate. You don't want them automated. It's so no, much more don't. fun to be in person. Um, and this kind of goes earlier. I had a show called Strangers or Friends and what is a stranger and what is a friend and our neighbors. And that was a really great show. So this kind of ties in with that, um, which is a nice, nice event that happened. <laughs> um, Eli have and I have talked with each other before and got to know each other and found out we're both here in Texas now. <laughs> great place to be um you could almost go on i have a picnic on the beach here in texas it doesn't get cold like it does in some of the northern states but um so you know we talked a little bit before about um the people that we meet and and my show previously of course is talking talking to strangers um mm -hmm. i kind of had an encounter with a person at at an antique store that I was at he's new to the area too and he was talking about um some of his neighbors are not so pleasant and how he reacted and as I'm watching him and listening to him I realize he's a little more aggressive in how he talks to people mm -hmm. and it's not that he's a bully it's just kind of I think the the environment he's always been up and how he was raised and so he just has a different way of approaching things and so we were trying to come up with a way to talk to this neighbor without one um, being, uh, uh, I want to say subservient, but that's not quite the right word, but to where he's, he's oh, it's okay, I just kind of want you to know this. And he goes, no, no, I'm not going to do that kind of thing. He just kind of wants to get it out there in the open and, and not beat around the bush or anything, which is okay, but if you're on the receiving end and you're not used to that, that can be a little, little tough. So we mm -hmm. talked and I, I mostly let him talk and offered a couple of suggestions. And we actually came with something that's going to work for him. Now I know that doesn't work the first time you meet somebody, you know, come with a solution like that. Um, but, but what do you think about something like that? You know, how, when you first meeting people and coming up with solutions for someone who may, who's maybe a little more aggressive, just because that's, the way he's his environment's always been. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a you know there's a couple of things with that. One is, um, you know, there's a great meme going around, and I, I probably will butcher the quote, but um, something about you know you never um, always treat people with respect because you never know what's going on in their lives. And, right. and the reality is that a lot of times that especially in today's world where um, people are just are very volatile right now. 
both in the, you know, politically and stress related. And I mean, there's so mm. many different reasons people are very high strung in, in general. And the, and what we need to do is stop and think about the fact that we don't know what's going on. We don't know how somebody was raised. We don't know what they're thinking. We don't know if they just had a bad day. Um, so it's our job to just come from a place of kindness and respect. And this is, yeah. these are two, these are my core values. These are two things that I, I stick with completely. Um, goes back to something in the last couple of years, I got very heavy into studying Bushido, which is the code of the samurai. And mm -hmm. it's all about their virtues, about their, their philosophy, essentially. And it really, those are two of those virtues. And the great thing is that I already kind of came to those on my own. And then I started studying and I'm like, oh, well, that's why it makes more sense. And so we, we have to look at that and know that some people, it doesn't matter. I mean, some people, their face is just angry. Their personality is just gruff. That does not necessarily mean that that's their personality. That means that that's their, their mannerisms. And so once you learn that and you realize that, and if you give people the benefit of the doubt of that, then it's very different. It's a very different conversation because that person is not necessarily being aggressive or, they're not necessarily bullying you or whatever. A lot of people tend to think about those kind of things, but they just happen to be gruff. They happen to be in your face. You know, I, I know people like that. I am not that way. I, I don't like it when somebody else is that way, but I also understand that is just their personality. Um, I, I know a guy that he always talks about. He's like, I'm not an angry dude. My face just thinks it is, you know? And so we have to give them that benefit of the doubt. And that is the most important thing. And if we come from a place of calm, from showing empathy towards the people right. that we meet and understanding that we don't know what's going on and doesn't really matter what's going on, we just want to show them respect, be kind to them, have a conversation and listen more than we talk, because that's a very important thing as well. And just, you know, let them be, let, a, let them have their conversation and look at things from an objective standpoint. Don't, don't, don't go into the emotion side, go into the objective. Are these facts? Whatever their fat person is saying, think about the facts, not what I'm opinionated about the facts because opinions are a pain. Facts are <laughs> just facts. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And one thing I've been, um, I don't know if I've been learning it, if I've been testing on it, if, if it just seems like it's just come up a lot lately and that's mm -hmm. giving people grace. Yeah. Um, you know, how would I want to be treated in this situation? Um, and I would want to be treated with grace with, with, and there's a difference between grace and mercy and, and empathy and all of those. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to tell anybody what grace means. I actually looked up grace. I looked up mercy. I looked up empathy to see what they specifically are and what their differences are and how to use them appropriately. So mm -hmm. that's my challenge to you audience. Look up grace, empathy, and mercy and see what they are. Um, but yeah, giving somebody some grace and what they're going through. Um, this morning, I had a conversation with um, a credit card, a gal from the credit card company. There was a charge on there, clear over in another state that was made this morning. And I'm here in Texas. I'm not clear over in another state. Right. But as mm -hmm. I was talking with her, um, we're getting near the end of the conversation. And all of a sudden, her voice starts cracking. And, you know, I didn't say anything because I know she was trying real hard to keep it together. So if you listen to the previous show where I'm talking about um, not everybody is going to have a Merry Christmas because of things that have happened in their lives. So I didn't want to pry. I didn't want to make her cry more. So just giving her a little bit of grace and telling her Merry Christmas, you know, before we um, hung up and, mm -hmm. and she appreciated that. Um, we have to think about about something and and it's like what an awful thing must be going on for her to right. try to hold it together so good but but not be able to write at the very end and and that's okay and not take it as something personal or against me because that wasn't it at all i had nothing to do with it mm -hmm. um and and that's one thing i do want people to remember right now is during this holiday season you have there are families who have someone in the hospital that is seriously ill a friend of mine 
um, is going on a transplant plant list next week, I believe it is, uh, to get a liver. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not the merriest of Christmases, but she's right. doing the best she can, her and her husband and family. Um, you have those with children in the hospitals, different things like that. Maybe a loved one has passed away. Yesterday I was um, heading into town and there was a funeral procession going through. And I thought, gosh, that's got to be so tough this close to the holidays. But life goes on. Life happens, whether we like that part of life or not. You know, you have the good days and the not so good days that get in there. So, yes, thinking about what is the other person going through that maybe I need to show a little kindness or compassion um, or how would I want to be treated with, you know, I spoke earlier um, in one of the other shows too about the uh, golden rule we had in all of our schools when I was growing up, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, what does that mean? It's like treat others the way you want to be treated. And and how would I want somebody to treat me at that point, you know? So, yeah. By the way, I have to say this. I love the hashtag meet cool people above your head. That's just <laughs> wonderful for, for those that are just listening to the audio. He's got this, this be in the background behind him. It says hashtag meet cool people. Tell me about that. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, hashtag meet cool people is my thing. It's a it's a phrase that I have had. I've I've done this for years, literally for decades, and I didn't even realize it until more recently. It was in 2019. I was traveling across the country um, as a speaker, and I'm on a plane at least once, if not two or three times a month, going to different events. And it was funny because I'm I'm actually speaking in in a, at an event in Miami, and the host actually had me come back multiple times because he had a different group of people of audience coming to his events. So he'd have me come and he would have me speak there. And what ended up happening was that we basically, I would tell people, you know, I'm going to be here. I'm speaking. This is going to be awesome stuff. Um, but reality is I, you know, yeah, speaking is fun and I'm going to teach you cool stuff. But the reality is I live in Portland, Oregon, which is where I lived at the time. I'm like, we're in Miami, Florida. This is almost as far across the country, coast to coast as you can get. Yep. I'm here not just to talk and share stuff, but I'm here because my favorite thing in the world is to meet cool people. Yeah. And that's the important part. And that ended up taking off. And so moving forward, the MC of the show would actually be like, all right, so this is Eli. He's our next speaker. And he's the guy who flies across the country just to meet cool people. And so it kind of took off. It became its own thing. We have these really cool wristbands that we have now. Um, <laughs> And so I've got the wristbands. I, I hand them out to people when I'm, you know, that I meet that are going to do something with them and they, they get the message. And it is about meeting people because the people that you meet are going to get you anywhere you want to go. Um, but you yeah. have to have the conversation first. And that's where a lot of what we've been talking about already comes into play because we're not, we need to have good conversations. We need to get to know somebody, not just as a, this is who you are and this is what you do for, right. uh, for business, but where's your heart? Where, where are you coming from? My favorite part of conversations are like, my favorite thing, honestly, is, is honestly, is breaking bread. Cause I think that when, by breaking bread, having dinner with somebody, you can get to know more about them than any other way, any other action out there. And you can get to know where do they come from? Why do they do right. what they do? It's not what they do, but why do they do that? Why did they choose yeah, that? Why behind them? Yeah. yeah. And that's where you can see where the fire is and that's where their heart is. And that's powerful. That's the fun part. And oh, so definitely. that's where the really cool people kind of came from. I like that. That's great. Yeah. One of, one of the things with me, um, you know, I guide people to find their purpose and it's like, what really lights you up? What, what, what do you enjoy doing more than anything else? And, and when you do something, what is it that is like, man, I would love to just do that again. And I got so much energy from that. And it's like, where's the next one going to go You know, to just keep going on that, but not just to find that purpose, you know, that thing that you really like to do, but how to take action on it and go from there. 
Um, so yeah, I like that. I'm going to have to get one of those wrist brands from you. We'll talk later after the All show. Right. I'll get you one. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just when my husband and I first got married and, and we're in the stores and I just start talking to everybody. I grew up that way. You know, my grandfather said, I've never met a stranger, only friend I haven't known before. And that carried on through his children. And, and that's why, you know, as a grandchild, I was raised in that same environment. And so talking to somebody in the line at the grocery store or, or having a conversation with a person, you know, like the clerk at the bank, you know, instead of just, hi, give me my money, you know, it's, it's like, how are you doing? What's, you know, going on with your family? And you get to know them. And, and he was like, how can you just talk to people? And it's like, because they're just people like you and I. And when you're standing in line, it's kind of boring just standing there. And so have a conversation. You know, I, <laughs> one gentleman, he's so funny. He uh, had a bag of dog food and we got to talking. And, and I said, boy, that's a pretty big bag of snacks you got there. And <laughs> he goes, let me tell you what I did one time. And he had he had like some little cookies or something in his pocket, and and uh, there was a lady in front of of him in the grocery line, and she was not having a good day, and it was just frustrating. And uh, he goes, "Here, would you like a cookie to help brighten your day?" And she just kind of looks at him, and he goes, "I'm it's okay. I'm getting extras right here." <laughs> he said, "The look on her face." <laughs> But her whole attitude changed. All of a sudden, she wasn't having quite a grumpy day. And everybody kind of understood. Um, you know, I talked about this before. And I think I mentioned it in one of the shows when I was I was pregnant. I mean, I was obviously pregnant. And I think I only had just a few weeks to go. And I'd gone to the store. And I don't chew tobacco. I don't smoke any of that. But a friend of ours was over. And, and since I was going to the store to get ice cream, because, you know, when you're want ice cream you want ice cream it was a hot day so I go to get ice cream I got a, a can of tobacco and I'm standing in line and and everybody's just trying to figure out how to deal with the heat and and uh, everybody came to the store at the same time so it's kind of slow so we're just talking and talking I get up to the checkout stand and the clerk she's just this young gal she must have only been about 18 and I think I was like 25 at the time and or 23 I would have been and uh, she goes, you know, tobacco's bad for you. And I go, yeah, but sometimes you just get the strangest cravings when you're pregnant. And everybody busted up laughing. And it was just enough to break the ice to give everybody just a happy part of the day. And, and then, you know, we kind of went on our own merry way. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't take much just to talk with people, just to say something, you know, different. Um, I mean, how many times I, when I was growing up, I remember guys always opened up doors for women. They always stood up when women came into the room, always removed their hat, things like that. And then, you know, the equal rights movement came through and things started changing. And one guy's standing at the door and he can't decide what to do. And I go, is the door stuck? Because I thought maybe it was locked or something. He goes, I don't know whether to open it for you or not. I said, I like it when gentlemen open doors for me. And he was just so relieved, but he was felt so much stress because he'd been yelled at by women too. What are you doing opening the door for me? And it's just like, how sad that is that you can't even show a kindness. But I think that's kind of going away now. Don't you think so? You know, someone, I open doors for people. I smile at people. It's just simple mm -hmm. things you can do. Here, are you got too many bags and you're juggling your kids and everything. Let me set your baggage up on the counter, the post office or the UPS store for you. I mean, there's right. all kinds of things we can do just to have fun. And, and I'm going to say one more thing <laughs> before I let you talk. I know I'm just kind of rambling, but I like what it says, hashtag meet cool people. And I, I, Gosh, I have a habit of doing this. I'm going to go one step further and say, everybody's cool. You just have to look for it and ask them about it. <laughs> I, can, I can get that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, it's, it's just so easy to talk to people. Don't you think once you, you break that barrier of being afraid of talking to people. Right. Yeah. 
Um, it reminds me of the book I've got coming out. I was, I was so ready to have it come out. And then I met a new person, a new stranger. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and one of, one of the, I actually met the gentleman first, who I've only talked to a couple of times. He's moving to LA from Germany, young kid, very smart. And he said the way he got to meet cool people is he used to do that free hugs. You'd hold up the cardboard mm-hmm. sign and get free yep. hugs. And that kind of got him over the fear of talking to people. Then he met a gentleman. Um, oh, I can't think of his his title. It's hashtag Jeremy. Jeremy talks with strangers. I think it's what it is. So now the book I was doing, the best strangers in New York City and other places are going to have two co-authors with me. It wasn't going to be anybody else's book but they're both on board we're gonna write this book together because that's what we all do we all talk to strangers Mm -hmm. and you do (laughs) oh definitely i i have a running joke um that i am i'm definitely the poster child for what not to do about stranger danger (laughs) because i will talk to anybody at any point at any place um i have done drive i've done business in the drive-thru of starbucks before yeah, you know, so That's funny. <laughs> yeah, you know, we just have good conversations, and it all starts from a good conversation. You just roll from there. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and and long before it was a popular thing, um, I used to pay for the person behind me, or if there's you know across the way, like if you're at a coffee shop, you can you know drive through, you can see the person. If, you know if it's a police officer or the fire station, because we used to be firefighters and EMTs and stuff, so I always worked with them. So I'd buy their coffee. And so long before that became a real popular thing to do, I was already doing it, you know, and my kids asked me, why do you do that? It's like, because sometimes it's just nice to show a kindness to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you, you don't do it because you have to. Oh, so my, my one friend said to me, um, I, I was just so appreciative of the gift she gave to me. And I said, you didn't have to do this. And she goes, no, I didn't have to. And isn't it nice that I don't have to, that I just can do it. And I thought, wow, yeah, that just puts it right there, isn't it? And now it's the season for giving. So (laughs) give a smile. I mean, reality is every season should be forgiving. Um, We, Mm -hmm. you know, just having, if you can make somebody, so here's, here's the thing. I always talk about the, the ripple effect. The ripple effect is, um, and it goes on a ba- business side. I talk about it on a business side quite a bit, but reality is it's it's in everything that we do because how we treat people one way or another um, makes a ripple effect in everything else that we do. So yeah. you get up in the morning and you go get to, you know, I like for me, I'll get up in the morning and I'll go to my local Dutch Brothers coffee shop and get my mocha. So I'm talking to the barista. I'm talking to the person who talks, takes my order. I'm smiling. I'm joking with them. We're having a good time. So I help. I'm doing something to try to make their day a little bit better. There are times when their day is really not going good because you got a whole bunch of grumpy people who haven't had your coffee, coffee yet. And <laughs> so I've had that. I've gone to to the coffee shops where you could just tell, you know, the gal that's taking your order is just having a bad day. And I'll just say something to make her smile or a joke, you know, something, something to make it entertaining. It's like one of the things I always order, I I order my mocha with oat milk and they'll say, well, do you want the whipped cream with that? I'm like, well, that's not a fair question because of course I want the damn whipped cream, um, but I shouldn't be having it. So no, please don't put it on. And they stop for a second and then they get it and they start laughing because they understand the pain that I'm going through by not having the whipped cream. (laughs) <laughs> and and they get it and they have fun with it and it's, and and that could be the only smile they make in the entire day because oh, no. you know because yeah. you, you never know again like we were talking about earlier you never know what people's um, day is like or what's going on in their world so if i can make them grin if i can make them laugh for two seconds i added value to the world oh definitely and by doing that they're now going to be in a better mood and they're going to treat the next customer better. They're going to treat their coworkers better. And it's just, it's a ripple effect because then by them being in a better mood, maybe they'll strike some goofy little joke off for somebody else. And then that person 
has a good day and they do good things and the next person and the next person and the next person and it just ripples out all because i joke with them about my whipped cream <laughs> i mean that's yeah. all it takes it's not that big of a deal but yeah we make a huge difference by doing it. it's true it's it's just sometimes the very simple little things that you do um you know i i uh gosh you you talking about that i remember one lady i I was talking, I don't even remember where it was at. I know I was in a store somewhere and mm -hmm. I said, you know, I hope you have a really good day today. And she goes, you know what? You're the first person that said something nice to me all day. And mm -hmm. it's like four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. I was shocked. I mean, how can you go all day without not saying something nice to somebody? Mm -hmm. And it was like, I'm glad I was there towards the end of her day to at least end her day. Right. But, uh, yeah, I know when I've not been happy, somebody smiled and it just puts a smile on my face and I start feeling better. Um, mm -hmm. What was it? Uh, uh, I can't think of his name. Uh, hmm. And I've talked about him before. <laughs> um, this, uh, somebody I say the spiritual gentleman, but he talks about uh, laughter yoga. And mm -hmm. I thought, well, what is that? And it's just, you just start laughing. Because you just start making your body move. And by laughing, even just a little bit, just, ha, 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 ha. you know, <laughs> you just do it whether, whether it makes sense or not. And you just start feeling better. So, you know, Reader's Digest talked about laughter being the best, med the best medicine. Mm -hmm. And it's true because when you're happy, when you're laughing, what is it? All those endorphins start firing yeah. off or whatever they do. And you just feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, going back to the, like where me cool people started and all that kind of stuff. One of the things that I actually got very well known for was gathering people for dinners at events. So mm -hmm. I would fly in whether I'm speaking or not. And I start getting people together and we'd all go have, go have events. And what I would do is, um, you know, it'd be fun because I get like, maybe I'm speaking on stage. I get off stage. Somebody walks up to me and they're like, Eli, that was so awesome. Thank you so much. I can't wait to go try the stuff you shared and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, thank you. I really appreciate that. Tell you what, some of us are going to get together for dinner. Why don't you come join us? And so we get a bunch of people together. And uh, I had a place in Miami that I used to go to all the time that was in Biscayne Bay. It's an outdoor food court type of place. So it's not uh -huh. fancy at all. I mean, they've got the aluminum chairs and dining room stuff that's really noisy and clinky <laughs> and not very comfortable. It's very cold when it gets cold out. Um, and we would get 10 or 15 people in there. And it was it was Mambo Cafe is the name of it. They had great Cuban food, great mojitos, mm. and amazing service. I had the same waitress almost every time. Her name is Noor. She's out of Venezuela. Um, I got to the point I would walk in with like 10 people in tow and she would see me. She's like, sir, you're back. And she'd come and give me a big old hug. And the conversations we would have, we'd have great service and we would have great food and we would laugh and get to know each other. That's magic. That's yeah. where you get the magic to really happen. And many of those people became clients. Some of them are clients of mine today because of people that I met in 2019 and they're still my clients purely because I invited them to dinner That's and wonderful. just hung out with them. That's powerful. I realized we haven't taken a break yet. So let, now is a good time to take a break and we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> You've completed college or university, or are working hard in your career. Perhaps you decided to be a stay-at-home mom. Perhaps you're wondering if who you really are got lost somewhere along the way. Asking, is this all there is? You know you were meant for more, or were you? Yes, we each have a purpose in life, and that purpose can be fulfilled. It doesn't matter if you are 18 or 80. You matter in this world, and especially in your world. Tune in to The Value in You Show with your guiding coach and mentor, Alice Kirkpatrick. Ellis will help you find your purpose. Listen for The Value in You Show with Ellis Kirkpatrick each Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com.
Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Value in You show with Ellis Kirkpatrick. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to valueinyoupodcast at gmail.com asking how to participate in the program. Now, back to the show. Well, welcome back, everyone. We're here with Eli Delaney, and we're not picnicking on the beach, but we could. <laughs> Let's try something new this year for Christmas. <laughs> So Eli, you were talking about the restaurant and how, how the waitress recognized you. And during the break, it reminded me of um, when we lived in Oregon, a uh, little town, probably about 45 minutes um, west of Portland, okay. <laughs> get my directions right. Mm -hmm. And we'd go into this restaurant all the time and we could just go there, eat and then leave. But no, no, I can't do that. So I got to know the waitresses and and uh the staff there and it was just wonderful because you'd go in you talk about it. i mean these are our neighbors too mm -hmm. you know even if you live in town these are still your neighbors they're still just regular people doing their regular jobs um and but it's wonderful it's wonderful just to have these conversations and it's not just to have a conversation but you get to know people more um i had had kind of been away from people with COVID and everything that was going on and I was going to a big event my first event here in Texas first event I'd been to in like three years and I realized I really didn't know what to say to people so I talked to a friend of mine a mentor of mine and I said what do I do how do I talk and so I was given suggestions and if you go to my website www.elliskirkpatrick.com I have a free page where I have all of these freebies for you freebies for don't be stressed during the holidays how to talk to people how to continue conversations when you talk to someone you know I actually have a sheet that I write down everything where they're at where they're from and so I can remember because I don't always remember everything about everybody um but but it was really great to have this thing in my head um, about how to get to know people. You know, people mm -hmm. love to talk about themselves. Yep. So ask them questions that they will want to answer. You know, like talk, talk about your family, their family. You know, what do they really like to do? What are they? And they'll probably tell you about work. Oh, what I really like to do, I work for this in this company and it's like okay so when you're not at work what do you like to do when you get home do you mm -hmm. just sit and watch tv um you know do you have have a hobby that you do and just really kind of get to know them um you know as i mentioned my husband it was great now at conversations with strangers it's just fun to watch him uh, you know knowing that what he was like before that it was like how can you do that to now he's one who will initiate the conversation but it's it's interesting because um, I would find out about people's families and their hobbies, things they really liked. And he would find out another aspect. So we could kind of, you know, get a whole person between the two of us to <laughs> find out more about what they who they really are. And and I think what you said earlier about their why. Why do people do what they do? Why do they work at the job why, that they have? Why do they... Um, enjoy the hobbies or the recreational activities that they do um i think yeah definitely finding what makes people tick they used to call it mm -hmm. you know like a yeah. clock what what makes them work um is is a great way to start a conversation um the gentleman carrying the dog food you know find out what kind of dog does he have you know right. is he really buying these treats for his pocket no <laughs> 
<laughs> well, and you know, there's a couple of things with that. You know, one of the things you're talking about people's hobbies, first and foremost, if you want to, if you want to get to know somebody better and like, you know, we're, we're entrepreneurs, we're in business. So obviously, yes, we want to sale because that's what we're in business for, but getting to know how can we, not only can we help them, but how can we help them achieve the things that they want yeah. above and beyond? What's the, what's that next reason why? And you can find so much of that. Go just connect with somebody on Facebook, see what they do. You know, one of the things I always find hilarious, and this came up just recently, is like, so I'm a Ren Fair guy. I love oh, to go too. to Renaissance Fairs. Um, and you're in Austin, which has one of the best in the country, right? So, Good. oh yeah, um, I don't, did you not know that? It's like the, no. the yeah, the Sherwood Fair is on, um, it's over on the east side of Austin. Um, okay. Yeah. And then there's in Houston is the Texas Renaissance Fair, which is the biggest in the country. Um, now, you know, we could go on a full tangent about where all That's the fairs show. are. I know <laughs> where all the fairs are. Um, in 2019, I went to nine fairs in eight states. Okay. Oh, wow. So I'm a nerd. Okay. There's no question <laughs> about that. But the fun thing about it is like, people know that about me. So they know that I'm, that I'm a Ren fair guy. I do like to dress up. I like to go with my daughter, have a blast. Um, we watch the jousting. I love the musicians. I'm, I have a music mm. background originally when I was growing up. So music always draws me in. And some of the musicians at the fairs are the best. Um, I love mead. Mead is a great thing to drink, uh, especially at a fair. And so now I've got these conversations where people get to know these things about me. And like, I have a friend of mine that I met actually at one of those Miami events in 2019, she became a client. She then became a friend. We're still friends. She's in Austin. She's like, okay, when are we going to go to this, the Ren fair now that you moved here? So I drove down, picked her up. We went to the fair for the day. One time we, we had not met in person since 2019. And this oh, last wow. year, we just did that. Um, and I talked to her pretty almost every week now. And, um, I had somebody who I was at this event just this last week, somebody I had not seen in three years. I think it was before the world shut down and everything. Um, and she and I had had a good evening of sitting down. We had dinner, we had drinks. We just had a, had a really good conversation. It was the first time we'd had a time to really talk. And it was a phenomenal conversation. And then life happened for both of us. We had not talked in a long time. We happened to both be at this event. So we start talking again. And she was like, oh, by the way, I have to tell you, I just recently went to the Ren Fair with, with I think it was her niece, I believe. Um, and she's like, and I, and I, she brought it up and I was like, I have to go. And I immediately thought of you. And so she's pulling out her phone and she's showing me pictures and everything. Um, and then literally just last night, one of my clients sends me this message on Facebook and says, Hey, do you know about this meadery, which a meet a meadery in Chicago? I've only been to Chicago once in my entire life. I was like, <laughs> nope, never heard of it before. Let's check it out. These are all the things people get to know what you know, the things that I'm interested in outside, and now they're interested in some of these things. Yeah. And so it expands their world by being part of that. And none of that has anything to do with the business. Right. And like right. Two, of, two out of three of those people are clients of mine, but they're checking out. I have another client actually, um, you know, I'm Martin Salama. Mm -hmm. um, he actually mentioned to me, he's like, I've been in, in New York my entire life. I've always wanted to go to the Ren Fair. I never have, but because of you, I'm going to go to the Ren Fair this year. I'm like, all right, <laughs> tell me, tell me when, let's see if I can book a flight. I'll come up and hang out with you. Oh, you know, fun. yeah, it's all about that outside because that's where people get connected and we have a good time and we get to know again, what makes people tick. Like, you know, for my business, one of the things that I enjoy about being successful in my business is it gives me the funds to travel around the country and dress up and go to fairs and drink meat <laughs> and watch jousting. I mean, you know, right. uh, fly. I mean, I, when I went to the Texas Renaissance fairs before I moved here, I, I flew, I flew down because I was speaking and it happened to be going on at the same time. So I flew to Dallas. I stayed for 10 days, checked out the entire place. And then that following Friday, I flew my daughter down so we could go down and spend two days at the fair. Oh, fun, fun. You know, so it's it's all about what, again, going back to what's your why? Why are you doing these yeah. things? I like to go to rent fairs. I like to have fun. I like to take friends to it. I've had some friends where they've never been to fairs before and I get to bring them and, and show them the experience. And 
that's such cool stuff. But that would never have happened if we hadn't had a conversation about it to begin with. Right, right. Yeah, a, f- a friend of mine from uh, Florida, actually. Yeah, um, he was talking about how he isn't going to use the word network anymore because that's not what he's doing. He's calling it relationship building mm-hmm. because that's what he wants to do. Right. And it's not just to get to know people, to find out how can my business help them. But um, I think what we're all talking about here is how can we serve each other? Mm-hmm. And it's about a serving attitude, a servant attitude. It's yeah. not being a slave. It's not um, just doing things for other people. But serving each other is, it goes beyond doing things. You're doing it, you're helping them with what they need help with. You're not just doing, oh, I see your roof needs done, so I'm going to fix your roof. Well, maybe they don't want the roof done because they've got something else going on that needs to be taken care of first. So, you know, ask them if your neighbor's yard is not mowed, maybe offer to mow it for them the next time you're mowing, you know, instead of having this little path of of grass next to grass, tall grass next to short grass, so if you can just go ahead and mow their their lawn for them, I mean, just simple things you can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think having a servant attitude is is maybe there's another example of grace, mm-hmm. giving grace to somebody else. Yeah. What can I do to help you grow? The one thing I love about um, helping people find their purpose is not just wow, you know. I mean, another client check it off you know my list here we go that's not it at all it's helping them find what really gives them joy and then helping them find a way to achieve it and continue to go with it and to take action on it um to give them the life that they want you know someone asked me this morning you know well what is what does success mean to you and it's like you know it's for a different book that someone else is asking me to help with and it doesn't matter what success means to me. But what does success mean to you? What right. is it that you want out of life? You know, maybe you want to leave a legacy for your grandchildren. Maybe that's not success to you. Maybe success to you is to never have to worry about your bank account being, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. going yeah. from paycheck to paycheck, yeah. you know, Every, whatever success is. Yeah, everybody's definition of success is going to be different and yes and th- this will go back to that whole you know show respect and, and even the grace is that it's funny how some people have a hard time um understanding somebody else's definition of success so for some people they want you know they want the ferrari they want the rolex they want the private jet things like that um, I wouldn't be opposed to the private jet, but the cars, the cars and the watches don't do anything for me. Right. <laughs> private jet, just because I don't have to go through TSA. Yeah, that's really, right. really the best <laughs> but those things don't make a difference to me. I couldn't care less. Um, I don't care about going to, you know, going to a bar and having bottle service or any of that kind of stuff. I do appreciate a good meal and I have no problems, you know, dropping a hundred bucks on a good steakhouse, but it's not about the steak. It's about the people I'm with while I'm doing that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Now for me, uh, of course, we're going to go back to the nerd in me. Um, I'm a Ren Fair guard guy. So what do I want? I want a castle. Okay. So <laughs> I, I already have it picked out. It's like, it's like 18 minutes from my house. It's great. But awesome. <laughs> here's the thing. It's so funny. I showed the pic- this picture of this castle one time. It was a different one before I found this one here. And I showed this to some friends and they're like, that is just obscene. How much, you know, how much other stuff could you do instead of buying that castle? I'm like, no, see, that's, that's the wrong look at this is because that is my thing. That is what I want. Yeah. If you don't want that and you want your, your little box house, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And so we have to realize that everybody's, um, their goals and their definition of success is different. If your definition right. of success is to make millions of dollars and give, give 99% of it away, cool. Right. If you want to go yeah. live in the Bahamas in a mansion with security guards, that's okay too. It doesn't matter as long as you are adding value to the world. That's the only thing that matters. That's the big part right there is adding value. And it's time for a break again. So (laughs) we'll be back right after these messages. 
You've completed college or university or are working hard in your career. Perhaps you decided to be a stay-at-home mom. Perhaps you're wondering if who you really are got lost somewhere along the way. Asking, is this all there is? You know you were meant for more. Or were you? Yes, we each have a purpose in life, and that purpose can be fulfilled. It doesn't matter if you are 18 or 80. You matter in this world, and especially in your world. Tune in to The Value in You Show with your guiding coach and mentor, Ellis Kirkpatrick. Ellis will help you find your purpose. Listen for The Value in You Show with Ellis Kirkpatrick each Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Value in You Show with Ellis Kirkpatrick. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to valueinyoupodcast at gmail.com asking how to participate in the program. Now, back to the show. All right, here we are back again. <laughs> I want to thank you, our audience. You add value to our lives by being here, by listening. I know this is a pre recorded show, but you still add value to our lives by being here every Friday at 1 o'clock Central Time to Eastern. And I thank you for that. Um, I thank our guest, Eli, for being here. We still have plenty of show left. <laughs> Don't want to just stop, stop now. Now, Eli, you were talking about value and what success means to other people and the show is is called picnicking on the beach because i wanted to present a, something new that you might want to try but that is not your thing that might be somebody else's thing and one day i would like to do that not that i need to do it every christmas but i think one time it would be fun to have a picnic on the beach go to hawaii australia somewhere in the bahamas to do that but uh not your kind of things and that's okay the wonderful thing that we have with everybody is each of us can add value to each other's lives because we've all gone through different things. So we have different ways of approaching, showing perspective, um, just being a part of this world. Don't ever think that you don't have any value or that you aren't worthy enough or that you're just not enough because you are just the way you are. You just one thing I was reading today, I was watching a motivational speech and it was talking about, I don't need validation from other people. And that's one thing I used to have to have was validation from other people, or I didn't feel that I was whole. And it's like, but I don't anymore um, because I know who I am. And, and that's a really big thing is, is we need to know who we are. We need to know why we are so that we can go do the things we want to do and guide others along the way. Yeah, um, I would definitely, I would agree with that. I think there's a little bit of a difference though, as far as the validation. Um, I think the validation also helps keep us on track. So not putting a hundred percent faith into it. Um, like, you know, if, if I do this thing and, and nobody likes it, then I'm a failure, that kind of stuff. We don't, that's too far on the negative side. We don't want that. Right. Um, but I think that people do miss the, the value in using validation from other people as a tool to make sure we're on the right track. And, ah. and in general, I, I will push this more in the business aspect of things because we need to know it doesn't matter how good we think something is. If nobody wants to buy it, it uh, is not the right thing. Okay. <laughs> that's so that's right. just a fact. Um, and so I look at it from a business standpoint, but even in, even in real life, you might go down a path and you might go in this path of, well, I don't care what people think I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And 
when you go a hundred percent all in with that mindset, I've seen a lot of people go very into it down a really dark path very, very quickly to a point where uh, they just don't, they don't care about anything. And so mm -hmm. I think we need to be careful of that because it, there, there is definitely some validity to it, but remember that we are part of a community and right. there are certain standards. Like, I don't care who you are. You should not be going to Walmart in your pajamas. Okay. I don't care if you care about getting dressed, you should actually put on pants and shoes and, you know, there, there's just a point where certain things uh, that you should care to some degree. <laughs> yeah. I agree with that. I watch, I know the mom had just gotten up and she took her kids to the store to get them the stuff they needed for school that day. And, and you know, listening to a conversation, she'd been working long hours and she was in her pajamas and her bathrobe. <laughs> She didn't even have a coat on and the kids looked nice. They were dressed ready for school and she's getting all the things. And I thought I could say something to her, but it's like, why, right. you know, well, she's maybe she's a single mom. Mm -hmm. She's doing the best she can do. Right. And it's like, <laughs> and again, that goes back to the beginning of our conversation. There are circumstances where we don't know what's going on there's yeah. you know so i mean be careful to judge too far with that kind of stuff as well yeah. um, however we i've seen people who they just they they're just slobs because they don't they're like oh i don't care i'm gonna do whatever i want and it's like well no you, you just you smell funny you know there's a whole <laughs> different that's a whole different level and so i think that we always have to look at extremes on any side of anything yes. are always a bad thing yeah. i have a very very strong point extremes are bad don't i don't care what the topic is extremes are bad but come from a place of you know it doesn't matter what i'm doing today is how can i help somebody in the world how can i get up in the morning and make a positive influence on somebody else in the world make their day better make them right. smile right. Uh, connect them with somebody else that they need to um help them have that great meal that experience mm -hmm. Um, teach them something from stage, which I love doing, you know, the, what can I do to add value to the world? That's going to help somebody in a positive way. If we all started our day with that question. Oh yeah. The world would be such a better place, such yeah. an amazing place. And it doesn't, it's not that hard. It really isn't. It's all we have to do is try a little bit and just say, okay, how can I add a bit of value and help somebody say something nice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Even really if it's easy. just smiling, opening mm -hmm. a door, yeah. saying Merry oh, Christmas, definitely. you know, for years, everybody was afraid to say it. I have never mm -hmm. stopped saying it. Right. Um, you know, because well, I mean, it. Yeah. I, I and, want them to have a wonderful holiday. Right. Well, and even on the flip side of that, if we want to go down that route, um, the flip side of that, if somebody says happy holidays instead of Christmas, don't get offended. Because oh, there's yeah. a whole bunch of holidays oh, and they so are all at the same time. There's 552 different holidays in the last two months of the year. So why don't we just say happy holidays? That's what I use happy holidays. And that's just because it's encompassing. It's not for yeah. anybody, against anybody, any of that kind of stuff. It's all about celebrating something nice to somebody else. That's all that yeah. it's about. And if you can do that, and if you can keep that in mind, you will be a better person. You will be a happier person. You will spread happiness to other people. And again, as an entrepreneur, I always have to say, when you can cover those three areas to begin with, you will be more successful as an entrepreneur at the same time. That's awesome. So happy holidays. Okay. <laughs> oh man. And then be here for the 22nd of of December. I have a very special show set up. Um, not going to be your typical show, but then none of my shows seem to be typical at all. Uh, but thank you, Eli, so much for being here, for talking with my audience. I really wish we had more time. Um, I, I just appreciate you so much. And, and 
It's so cool. We're in the same state now. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Value in audience. You show. Ellis returns Fridays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, remember that you have great value. You are worthy. And you are enough.